So you want to deep dive into each character's weapons, perks, utilities, the lot. Fine. I have to point out that the characters are designed around specific roles to do in the game, and especially the arc mission. So if you want to learn more about it, there is a video I did on them in the suggested video at the end, and I will leave it in the comments. I typically only play in veteran or hard difficulty, and except for a few warm-up rounds, I only run arc defense missions. So I will try and address the weapons, primary and secondary, utilities, grenades and perks, according to how I play them, and the way I have identified the game to want them to be played. So let's start with the Hunter. Now, I use the Hunter to hunt down patrols in the Arc Defense missions. Given their jump jet and extra mobility, I think it's the ideal class for that purpose alone. Now, a team of three or four can take down any patrol in under a minute and keep the infestation level low. The other teams can then do their thing, the ore, defending the base, and not have to worry about plasmas or tigers popping up everywhere. Mainly, I use the Morita Hawkeye. It's perfect for patrols. You can just get up on top of a building or on top of a cliff and just shoot the little baby bugs. You have to kill 40 on each patrol. And this allows you to do that with precision and allied with the rest of the perks makes it ideal. The Emancipator as a secondary really is my only choice. I only use my pistol when I need to get out of danger and not really in combat. So this, with its extra stun ability, you shoot a warrior once and it stops dead for a few seconds, giving you that little precious time to run away. The Peacemaker is solid given its uh, stagger, but it's not as guaranteed as the Emancipator. This one is a one shot to a warrior and they stop for a few seconds. So this guarantees you have that little bit of time to get away. Going back, in terms of utilities, I run the ammo fabricator or ammo crate or ammo dispenser, whatever you want to call it, because it's extra protection in case of gunners. In patrols, when you get on top of a cliff, maybe you have no protection. If you plop one of these in front, number one, you have the ammo that you can resupply and keep taking out the patrols. And number two, it has a block, an object that is stopping a gunner from killing you with two or three shots. The others aren't really valid for the role that I use them. Well, some can be argued with. The scan beacon could make it easier to take down warriors, but then again, you can one-shot any drone with the marksman. The shock beacon isn't that useful, maybe for cover if you're in an area too open. The heal beacon just provides extra heals, and if you hide well enough, especially with the ammo fabricator cover, you don't really need it. So I don't really see any point taking any other one of these for the job that I use the Hunter for. In terms of grenades, I use the Napalm Grenade. One, it burns. So it kills all of the drones that it lands on in one shot. Any drone that gets in the fire also dies in one shot. The others, I don't tend to run because they're not useful for the job that I have. Grenade, Cluster Grenade, the Chemical Grenade and the high X Grenade, they're meant for something else. Chemical grenades are useful for base defense, for example, where the cloud stays there and keeps affecting all the bugs that gets in there and inflicts damage over time. The cluster grenade is more in individual situations against a little uh, horde. MX grenade against something like uh, a little group of bugs or a bigger bug, and high X grenade against one very strong bug. But for what I use the hunter for, the napalm grenade is ideal especially if they, the patrol spawns in an area where they all run through a certain path to go towards the base. I pop the grenade in that path and any bug that walks through it gets turned on fire and the drones get killed almost instantly with it. Then for the perks. Again, with the job that I use the hunter for, hunting patrols, this is ideal. The extra mags, or in this case, one mag for the marksman, it gives me a little bit more ammo. But this one is especially important, the pain boosters. You need to get to patrols quickly to take them down and stop them from stacking or to finishing and you can't complete it, so the infestation goes up. This allows you to have a temporary boost in speed in case something hits you in the back. When you take damage, it's temporarily increased by 1.5 times, regardless of it says temporarily, doesn't matter. <laughs> Everything else is really not useful for this. This would be more useful for a tank, 
The improved grenade cooldown is more for base defense, and the synthetic armor could help against the uh, melees that are chasing you, but my biggest threat isn't the melees because I have the speed and the mobility and the pain boosters. My greatest threat is the gunners that shoot me when I'm not, I'm not aware and trying to kill the drones. So this is not really useful. So that covers it for the hunter. Next, let's talk about the Bastion. Now, recently I had a change of heart. I used to run the Morita Saw in every round. And in fact, I recommended it in the last video. And if you use this role specifically for base defense, this is the weapon for you. But I tend to use it both for base defense and to go to the refineries and help with your team to cover it and defend it. So in this case, I have changed my mind. The Mark I carbine is more all round. You have a lot of ammo, especially with the perks that I selected. You have the capability to stagger them a little, and you have high fire rate. So you can hit a lot of things really fast. It's not as effective and damaging as the saw in certain situations, but you don't need to resupply as often. Therefore, you can hold the position for longer and you can hit more targets at once. In terms of utilities, I take the shock beacon. Now, the shock beacon is very uh, particular because it creates a barrier where any uh, smaller enemy, like a warrior or a drone, when it approaches, it gets stun locked for a little bit of time. Eventually, they make it through, but I use this in conjunction with the siege mode. So I tend to place these around, let's say, the refinery that I'm helping defend, and then I plot my siege mode in a place where I can pretty much defend the refinery from all sides, watch them try and get to the refinery or to me, they get stunned, and then I just kill them. Either with the grenade, or the other guys around me also help, or I finish them. Doesn't matter. But this stops them from having a direct path to whatever they're going to. They have to stop and stay there for a while, and this helps tremendously. As for grenades, I use the chemical grenade. Now, it has a blast radius of 6 meters, it inflicts damage over time, and the gas sticks around for 60 seconds. This is better, for say, than the others as an all-rounder, especially since I use the tank mostly for base defense and refinery defense. This allows me to control a small number of bugs to inflict damage over time, make it easier for the team to deal with it or by myself, if need be. Also, the chemical grenade can be used when in defense if the enemies find a breach through the walls and are threatening the arc reactor or the inside, plop this in that area and makes it easier for everybody to kill them. Because besides the damage being inflicted over time, when they shoot at it, it has less HP. So this is very useful. As for perks, these are the ones that I typically use. The synthetic under armor and the magazine bandolier. Now, there's different combinations, but for what I use the tank for, these are my preferred ones. This gives me an extra magazine in the saw, if I use it, that's an extra 150 rounds. And this protects me from melee bug attacks. It halves the damage. And this aligns with what I usually do with a tank. See, in refinery defense, I tend to stick between the refinery and the bugs. So they hit me instead of the refinery. This gives me an extra time if my siege fails. Then the extra ammo allows me to kill them or push them back. In base defense, I tend to jump into gaps to protect them. So let's say the enemy breaks down a section, I jump in it, plant my siege mode. This allows me to stay there for an extra amount of time while using the extra ammo to try and kill them or push them back. And if there is a break in the action, I jump forward and apply the shock beacon to section off that hole, giving my team time, or me, to repair the wall that was broken down. The others aren't really an option to me. Maybe replace the magazine bandolier with this, because this gives you one extra mag for the machine gun, so that's 150 rounds. But this gives an extra 50% in increased magazine size. So that takes each mag from 150 to 225. And since you get two mags, that's still 150 rounds, and you have to reload less often. With this one, you get the same ammunition, but you reload once. This one requires two reloads because you get 150 per mag. Also, if you take the carbine, this gives an extra 30 rounds per magazine. And if you look, the carbine gives an extra 300 rounds. And that is a lot more than the 120 that this gives for having two extra mags. 
So this, when I get to level 20, is gonna substitute this one. But then again, it's personal preference. Maybe you're in the base defense team and you like the uh, improved grenade cooldown and the powered up build tool. This is all about personal preference. For the job that I use the tank for, sealing off breaches, protecting the base and the refineries, my ideal perks is synthetic under armor, having the damage and the extended magazines giving me less one reload for the same ammo in the saw and in this case for the carbine that i use it gives me 180 extra rounds and less reloads now for the operator and this is really the janitor of the battlefield now i run the grenade launcher and listen i know some people might have a preference for the morita hawkeye with the support but Let's face it, the support, I use it for the refinery, taking resources back and forth, and for base defense. That's all I use it for. And this is extremely well-rounded for that. If you're in a refinery, there's usually a tank with you drawing all the action down there, and you just plop these things all over him and kill any bugs that go to the refinery or him. If you're in base defense, <laughs> the bugs tend to hoard themselves and bundle themselves up against the wall, so you just shoot this and kill 20 at a time. It just doesn't matter. This is the only gun I will ever consider for support, at least for now, in development. Utility, here there's a little bit of variability. It all depends on what you do. I need to be able to do more things with the support. So in this case, I take the ammo dispenser or the ammo fabricator. I like to leave these in uh, certain locations and since I use the GL launcher that has limited ammo, this helps me out a lot. Some people like to run the medical station to give out extra heals when they're not there. Some people take the first aid stim for themselves to heal and revive people. Some people even like to take the heal beacon to, to heal a, a designed area. It all depends on what you specifically need with your specific gun and your specific playstyle. This is the one that's most open to interpretation. I mean, they all are, but this one is more. This is what I usually take for my reasons, for the GL, and for what I use it for. But it's really up to you guys. As for the grenade, again, I take the chemical grenade. In this specific scenario, the napalm isn't as useful, and it aligns more with the tank, so I take the chemical grenade. I could take the scan grenade, but this has a long cooldown. The chemical grenade for me feels more useful. But again, they're all valid given their jobs. You can take the scan grenade if you want to make an, a horde easier to kill. You can take a napalm grenade to deny an area to the enemy. But I tend to use the chemical grenade for the damage over time, for the fact that it stays longer, and that it actually makes the bugs more killable. Now for perks, I tend to jump a lot, but the two that make most sense for me for the way I use the operator for base defense and the resource runs are these. The powered up build tool allows me to build a refinery and repair it faster, and in base allows me to build and repair things faster. Now, maybe sometimes if I want to use a different gun, or even in this, if I plan to use the pistol more, I try out the magazine bandolier. And sometimes I also try the improved grenade cooldown. And sometimes I also try the pain boosters. It's This one is really up to you. The utility satchel, I don't use it because the ammo uh, dispenser can be used up to four times and they stay in place. So having the extra fifth doesn't really make sense to me. But the other ones are really up to interpretation for the first one. This I have to take. 50% increased magazine size means a lot with the grenade launcher. It means every magazine instead of six rounds has nine. And that is huge. You can pretty much kill tigers and plasmas with a magazine or less. For the rest of them, like I said, it's up to you. If you mainly do the resource runs, maybe the pain boosters are more useful because it allows you to run faster if you get hit in the back. Maybe the grenade cooldowns is more useful to you if you're in base defending. Maybe the magazine bandolier if you use the sniper or a regular uh, Morita Mark I, this makes more sense to you. But maybe you wanna build faster and repair faster, sure. Ultimately, it all depends on how you use each class and the situations you are mostly in. Some might use the Assault class to just get the rocket launcher and camp a rooftop all game. You know who you are, <laughs> lol. 
It all depends on your personal playstyle for each of the troopers, and here I can only show you my perspective and how I play them. Do you use different combinations? What works best for you? Leave it in the comments below, just please be respectful. Leave a like, subscribe, thanks for watching, have a great day.